Hey guys, hey everybody, this is Ken Faulkner bringing you a video that I recorded last night. I posted it last night. And some of you commented on it last night. But uh, I got word and I watched a little bit of it. I just don't preview my videos. When I'm just going to flip, flip some knives while I talk. This is my carry today. I, I got the Devo Buzz. Anyway, uh, I don't really preview, preview my uh, my videos, and, and up till now, I mean, it's, it's worked. It's been okay. But, uh, yeah, somebody let me know, and I was starting to watch it a little bit. I usually watch it after it's posted. And I noticed that um, the video kind of went out a little bit towards the beginning of the, of the video. And this is the Kung Wu Pulsar carried today. And so, uh, anyway, it, it was the first time I had to delete a video. And if you commented on it last night, I appreciate it. And I'm sorry that uh, I'm not going to be able to respond to it because I deleted it before <laughs> I even knew that anybody had watched it. But, uh, like I say, I appreciate it. This is the uh, Jack Wolf uh, Feel Good Jack carried today. That's about the usual daily carry. Usually three knives. I got something that I'm going to drop in the pocket. Uh, so then I'm going to carry it in my front pocket. Let's see, this was in the back pocket. So uh, back left pocket, next to my phone. Front right pocket, primary. And that's that's kind of my carry in the day. But hey, um, so here I go, doing the video again. It, was, it went really long last time. And maybe I can get it shorter this time. Maybe not. You never know. It all came from buying a new knife. I had the box. I did a whole thing where I opened up the box. But uh, tonight, I'm going low budget. I'm going uh, quick and quick and dirty. I got the Spyderco Smock. And I actually bought it last week. Um, and this is one of the ones that uh, my girlfriend uh, was getting some money. I don't know if you ever get like... Uh, you have some kind of uh, account or something like that, and you get a little dis, dis, you know, disbursement on it, get a little money out of it. And she looks forward to it every year, and she's always so excited because I buy her stuff, and she appreciates that. And, and she likes to buy me stuff, but she can't always afford to. So when she gets the chance, she's going to jump on it. And uh, this is one of those knives. And she let me know I'm going to have a certain amount of money and I knew that I wanted this knife, this, the uh, Spyderco Smock, for quite a while. And, um, yeah, now that I got it, I'm super happy. Not disappointed at all. And it is a great knife, uh, great shape, uh, different from a lot of Spydercos. Hollow ground, you don't see that too often. And very nice. Uh, this is going to be S30V Steel. This is the smock named after the designer who is uh, Kevin Smock. And that's one, th one of the things I forgot in the other video. I wasn't able to remember what his name was. But I looked it up afterwards. I was also talking about the fact that, uh, I don't know if you watched the whole video, you might have heard me saying that I thought this on washers because of the action on it. It's still breaking in, but it's kind of got that hydraulic uh, washer kind of feel where it, it, it's got a nice smooth action to it. But apparently it does have bearings. And uh, I'm sure that they're going to get a little more droppy as time goes by. But it's certainly a shake shot now. I also mentioned that a uh, big surprise was the uh, flipper tab for a Spyderco. Um, I'm sure that has to do with the designer and his style. But um, I was surprised that it actually had one because I'd looked at the knife many times. Uh, I just never, I guess I never heard anybody say, or maybe I just forgot that it had a flipper tab. But hey, you know, it's fine. I, I tend to like to use the, uh, the, the hole, which is smaller on this one, but still functions quite well. Not so well on the camera, but it does. It also has a, a different kind of lock. Um, it's, it's similar to a lot of the Spyderco knives in that it's like the compression lock, but uh, if you imagine that this had a cutout right here and I was sticking my thumb in there across the back of the blade to disengage the lock, 
On this one, um, they extend out, and it's almost like a CME that you would get from OCD for for ECD, uh, ODC for EDC. If you can, uh, you can look him up. He's got a website where he sells those, and uh, it's kind of the same kind of thing, but this is more of a built-in, you know, straight from the factory type version of it, where it's so much easier to get your thumb on and compress that compression lock to open and close the knife. So uh, I like different kinds of uh, designs on, on locks. Uh, I'm probably going to do a video a little bit later on different ones that I own. And I just like to have um, different locks in my collection. That's part of my collecting of knives. So anyway, that's the smock. And I'm already kind of going long, so I'm going to put this guy down. Move on. Now I'm going through my the rest of the Spydercos in my collection. This is kind of my style I've been doing lately. I guess I'll do this until I get through my entire collection and, and I've shown you everything I have. But uh, yeah, I haven't quite gotten there yet. And Spyderco is a big part of my collection. Um, I think it's my favorite brand because I have so many and so many different styles. And like I said, the smock is, is different than others. So you got these holes in the, in the handle. It's got carbon fiber. Uh, looks a lot like the G10 that they usually have, but it feels different and it's got a good texture. Although the G10 does as well, but it's a little higher quality uh, material. But it's got that S30V. That's that's pretty common for Spyderco. And so I'm going to uh, kind of go through the other knives in my uh, collection that are Spyderco. And starting with a really small one. And this is one that I have on my keychain. That's why the little uh, ring is on here. Um, I keep this with my, my car keys all the time. This is the Spyderco Bug. And if you look real close, it's because it's a um, one that I carry on my keychain. It gets kind of worn over time from going in and out of the pocket, but it still has that little spider on there. And this one is uh, not a locking knife because it's so small, but it still does have that hole. Obviously, no flicking going on, but you can grab that hole to do the deployment uh, as a slip joint. Uh, no half stop or anything like that, but for something this small, you're only going to get this out to cut out, cut little things. Uh, I have used it to cut things. Um, because of the fact that it's on my keychain, I'm almost guaranteed to have this with me every single day. And uh, it's a good little knife. I think it's a 3CR MOV, something like that. Not the greatest steel, but you know. Considering the kind of cutting you're going to do with this, you're not really going to dull it too often. Should be able to sharpen it real easy. Uh, this is a little Chinese made one and very inexpensive. I think it's like 20, 30 bucks, something like that. Uh, when I bought it at least. Um, and I just I just like it because uh, if I'm going to have some of my keychain, I might as well have it be a knife. And, um, you know, Spyderco being one of my favorite brands, might as well be uh, a Spyderco knife. Especially since they have one that is available in that size. Next one is, uh, this one is, is my girlfriend's knife. Like I said, I, I do buy things for her as well as she buys things for me. And this one is called the Pochi. It's got a little bit of Japanese writing on there. Uh, maybe that's maybe it says Pochi. My understanding is that Pochi is like a, a, a name that they would give to a dog like Fido or, or something along those lines. Very common way to refer to a, a dog. And the reason why it's a dog this is not really a flipper tab. Looks like it is, but it, it's not going to go past here. But you do have the hole, and I don't think it's such a small knife that you're not really going to be able to flick this thing out. But because it's named after a dog's name, it is shaped like a dog. And um, this designer, I'm sorry, I can't remember his name, but uh, you could look it up. Uh, he is a Japanese uh, artist that makes a lot of things, uh, some knives uh, that are shaped like animals. And so this is called the Pochi. Sometimes we kind of kiddingly call it the Poochie uh, <laughs> because it's a, like a little dog. But you yeah, look at on that, that uh, clip, it's got a little paw print, uh, interesting kind of pivot on it. Um, this one is in actually some pretty good materials. You've got titanium, titanium. Um, this is in, uh, CPM S45VN. This little teeny blade is made out of a premium material. 
So it's pretty cool. It's got the little hollow grind similar to the Smok. It's got the hollow. Uh, like I said, it's not super common. They're more of a flat grind, I think, in general, as we go through some of these other knives. And it's got a it's got a um, frame lock, little tiny frame lock, and close that guy up. And that is the Pochi. So moving on, another one that's named after an animal but does not look like an animal. This is the cat, and another one that I bought for my girlfriend, named after an animal because that's what she likes, and that helps me to get her interested in knives. Kind of small, hard to flick out. Probably can do it without the camera, but um, this is a, a, a also this is a Taiwan made one. So um, Taiwan made knife. Uh, also the the smock is made in Taiwan, Taichung, Taiwan. A lot of good quality stuff coming out of there. Uh, this steel on this one is a B0N, and I believe that's uh, not exactly one of the the higher end steels, but uh, again, it's a small blade. I think you get a lot of forgiveness out of that. Uh, this is more of your traditional flat grind. On the blade, it's got the wire clip handle. When I bought this one for her, I was kind of jealous because I, I didn't have anything with a wire clip handle, but or uh, handle, uh, clip, but now I got some of the Devo knives with clips. I do like a wire frame. I think it goes in and out of the pocket really well. Maybe it doesn't look quite as nice as like a, a milled type um, titanium, but still it's very good and functional. And um, yeah, it's a great knife, cat. Um, it's got a liner lock. Similar to some of the other um, cheaper versions, and this is this is definitely uh, a cheaper knife, although I don't recall how much it was. Uh, next is a knife that I've had for a long time in my collection, and it's another one that's quite different. Um, kind of like the Pochi, kind of like the Smock. This one is a uh, a Karambit style, and I never really saw a lot of this in, on videos. It's called the Karahawk. Um, but it's like one of my favorites, especially as far as a self-defense knife is concerned. It's one of my favorites um, because of the fact that it has the Emerson Wave. And it even says the Emerson um, patent number here on the blade. If you can see that on the camera, I'm not sure. And um, it's got the, the typical uh, Karambit uh, ring on it. And when I grab a hold of it, because this part will stick out of the pocket. So it's not going to be one of those ones that's like disappearing in your pocket at all. It's definitely going to stick out. But for me, especially for a self-defense knife, being able to grab that ring, hang on to it, and open it with the Emerson lock, and it works really well. It'll pop right out, and it's out, and it's ready to go. It can strike pretty quick and deploy very fast. Uh, it's kind of hard to uh, get a faster deployment than that Emerson Wave, especially with this ring on it. So I really like this one, self-defense knife. Seki City, Japan, so another country that the uh, Spydercos are made in. And uh, yeah, I really like this knife. I think I said that a few times. Moving on, this is a very popular one. Um, I kind of got it probably because it's popular. Um, I'm not as big of a lockback type person, but I don't mind them. I have several in my collection. Also, I'm not a big fan of the FRN type handle, but Spyderco does it really well. So I did kind of want to see, because I'd always heard that, but I wanted to see for myself. And I say it's true. Um, very nice grippy handle, and it's it's su uh, substantial. Uh, I can actually flick it out. I can actually close it one-handed. So that's not bad at all. Um, a little bit of a scanty grind here. I don't believe that's hollow. It looks more flat, but kind of that that short bevel. Uh, it's got the uh, something. This is the only Spyderco I have that that has the uh, serrated blade. But they do have a very interesting style of serration on their blade. And uh, yeah, it stays sharp for sure. Nice small one. I don't know if I'll ever change out the. Uh, I've seen some good titanium type scales for Delicas. I think this is the Delica 4. 
Um, I don't really know how to tell the difference between Delicas, but I believe that's what it was when I bought it. Um, yeah, Delica Four says so right here on the handle. And uh, anyway, yeah, this is a kind of a traditional hole with the thumb ramp. I really like the thumb ramp on Spider Coves. I think that's one of the reasons why it's one of my favorite. The uh, ergonomics on Spider Coves, even though they kind of look odd, some people say they're ugly. Ergonomics on this uh, on these knives are great because of that thumb hole. You really uh, can hold on to it. Uh, any stabbing you're going to do, it's going to keep you from sliding up on the blade. Uh, any cutting you're doing, you're going to be able to use some leverage on that thumb and really do well with this knife. So that's the Delica 4. Um, moving on, I have a very uh, common, well-known one um, is the Spyderco Tenacious. All blacked out. This is, I think this is the first Spyderco that I ever bought because when I first started buying knives, I really just kind of thought, why would anybody spend more than $100 on a knife? Little did I know, years later, I would be multiplying that by a few times. Uh, this is also a Chinese-made knife, which helps to keep that price down. I think these are still like in the $50 range. It's an excellent knife uh, from the first time I got it. Uh, just quality action. Uh, snaps out so well. The hole and the and the middle finger flicking action. This is probably where I first learned to do that middle finger flick. It's just so easy and at least especially now that I know. But right now, man, I could just flick this out so easy and it's so nice. Uh, 8CR MOV blade, so it's a lower end blade, but easy to just sharpen, uh, which is nice. And uh, blacked out. Very cool looking, very typical little clip on here. Four positions, as you, you see in a lot of the Spydercos. The Delica has it. Um, the Carahawk doesn't. The Cat doesn't because of the wire clip. But um, it's pretty typical to see these have the four different positions, left hand, right hand, and uh, tip up, tip down. So that's kind of a nice little, uh, little thing. Uh, HCR, uh, this is a VG10, um, VG10 on this one, uh, like I said, the BD1N uh, uh, S45, this is like a 3CR, and this is a, a 30V, so they, they like to mix it up with their different blade steels, and you can definitely get uh, like little runs of, of knives, and you can get some very interesting like 3V type or all kinds of cool blade steels. Um, I'm tending to get stuff that's just the type of knife style I want. Here's another, another S30V. This is the Manix 2. I've shown this one before. And I do really like this. Another one with a different kind of lock. This is the ball bearing lock, which kind of looks like an axis lock. Kind of reminds me of the, the way that this uh, Pulsar is done. Because it has like a, like a tab that has a, a, it's more of a wedge shape. And so it makes it pretty easy to, to actuate. Um, so this is a great knife, great size knife too. I mean, it really fills the hand. It's a good blade length. A lot of spider coves are kind of smaller lengthwise, but they, they make up for it in the height. Flat grind, like I said, S30V. Uh, Manix 2, great, great knife. I would uh, definitely recommend that. It's one of my favorites now in my collection. Um, Hawk. I just I've had that for a long time. Tenacious. I just like it because it's like my first one. Um, this is another one, another one that's very common, and this is the the paramilitary two or PM two S forty five VN. Kind of like the Pochi. Um, I like this one. It's also got that good blade length. Those are similar. This one's a little bit more narrow um, blade, but. It is very, it's a great user knife for all different kinds of things. Um, it's got great action. It's got that compression lock like I talked about on the uh, smock. So instead of having this button here, I, I have to reach in with my finger and disengage the lock. But it just swings. As soon as I let go of that thing, it just drops. There's no resistance at all. So it's a, it's a very 
great knife. Um, a lot of people have it. It's got the four points for the uh, for the clip. And yeah, um, you know, either a PM2 or or a Para 3. Uh, I don't have a Para 3 in my collection. Uh, thought about it, but just haven't. But the PM2, they're so close. This one's a little bit longer, so that's kind of more my my uh, selection on that. Moving on, um, big knife. Uh, this is a Michael Janich design. And I, before I knew about Spyderco, I knew about Michael Janich. Uh, grew up martial arts, uh, reading Black Belt magazine. Michael Janich was always known for training military and police in fighting arts related to the knife. And he, um, so he was doing that, I believe, before he ever got together with um, Spyderco. But I think they brought him on for that specific reason. And this des this design is something that he kind of came up with from the ground up um, to work well for self-defense. Um, the Warren Cliff straight edge sort of blade, he tested out multiple types of blades. And there's a video of him. You can find that on YouTube. Testing them out, he'll like take a, a steak and he'll wrap it with sar saran wrap in a in like a tube that looked like an arm, and he would cut at it and see which one would hold in the cut, get the best cut, the longest cut. So it's a scientific process that he uses, and he is quite well versed. <clears throat> I've actually trained uh, in some seminars uh, related to uh, his fighting style. Um, Marshall Blade Concepts, and uh, I'd recommend that too if you're interested. Uh, obviously, knives are tools, uh, but some people like the self-defense aspect of it, even if you do still use them as tools. Primarily, I've never used a knife in self-defense. I never want to, but being a martial artist, I, I do like to train, and I do like the fun. It's almost like a chess match when you're working with somebody, especially with a knife because it becomes very eye-opening if you uh i've i've done this kind of training where you have like a training knife and you'll wear like a white t-shirt and then put lipstick along the edge of the training knife like a thick edge so you know so that you don't hurt anybody but with the lipstick and the white shirt and you're fighting with somebody you get to see where those cuts are really happening and uh, <laughs> it's really eye-opening because a knife is a very dangerous weapon as far as anything other than a firearm or a, or any kind of a projectile type weapon uh, as far as up close personal combat knife uh, very fast gets in there uh, before you realize it's happening you're it's happening uh, so it's kind of fun to train uh, not something you ever want to do I would never ever recommend anybody train in order to use a knife in a knife fight because um, you're likely to get cut almost for sure and they talk about that in the training that you kind of have to prepare yourself for that if you're going to fight with a knife expect to get cut don't freak out keep protecting yourself try to get home try to be safe uh, but know that it's very likely if you're dealing with uh, even if it's a knife on knife type thing someone's gonna get cut anyhow so I hope everybody understands that I don't want that to come off in any other way than what I intend. Um, training's a great thing, but anyway, moving on. This is my only uh, fixed blade from Sp Spyderco. I, I don't know how many they have. I know they have, I've seen at least one other, and I'm sure they they have, I have a catalog of theirs, and I've gone through it before, but I can't remember. But there's, there's so many different styles. This one was so cool um, with the leather sheath. I really love a, a leather sheath on a fixed blade knife. Don't have tons of fixed blades in my in my collection. Uh, this one looks really cool. Uh, when I got it, uh, it's a little thinner than I expected, but it, it's kind of like, it kind of fits in with the Spyderco theme. I mean, they do tend to have thin blade stock to be very slicey. Uh, strong knife, uh, it hangs in there. It's made in China. Um, this one is a ACR MOV. But yeah, it's held up, um, very slicey. I uh, use it for food, food prep, uh, use a steak knife. Uh, also have used it to make like uh, uh, like feather sticks and things like that for, for, for starting fires. 
and uh, it's got a nice little G10 handle that's not textured but it does have that taper to it you see it gets wider towards the back and it has this little choil area in the front so it kind of locks in your hand so I do like it and it has functioned very well I was a little bit nervous about the thinness of it on a fixed blade but it's really worked great so that's what I have in my collection uh, I definitely want to get more Sp Spydercos there's some that I have specifically in mind uh, hopefully uh, eventually you guys will be seeing those on the channel uh, but here is my everything I have including uh, what my girlfriend has uh, for Spyderco uh, currently and uh, hope you enjoyed the video um, I hope this one works out it's a little bit shorter than the first one and I will get this out tonight and I will see you on the next one